everyone, my name is Lorraine and thank you for joining me on my channel today. I want to share with you some of my favorite beauty hacks. Some of these I've known for my whole life and some I've learned fairly recently actually. It's amazing how you can live to be 76 years old and still keep learning new stuff, right? It makes life extremely interesting. We're going to start by focusing on the eyes. Now, you've probably heard of slugging. I find that a wonderful word. Slugging with Vaseline. Now, good old-fashioned Vaseline has been around forever. I've never tried this. <laughs> what you do is you put this under your eyes and you put a big, thick layer and leave it on overnight. Put it over your night cream at night. Leave it on and apparently in the morning it just softens that skin and softens those wrinkles. I do use Vaseline sometimes not in a thick layer but in a thin layer and I will sort of pat it gently over my eye cream. I don't know I can't see that it's made a huge difference but Vaseline is a wonderful product to have in your beauty arsenal because it can be used for many things. It can be used as a moisturizer just for your skin and you can slug your whole face too and your decollete I suppose if you wanted to overnight. So this is a very interesting product to have around. Next, here's a trick that I've really known my whole life. And that's because I'm sloppy when I apply mascara, especially since I have hooded eyes. Now, what I have learned, though, is that when I'm applying my mascara, I look down so that I'm not hitting that skin there with the wand. So I look down, and of course, I think that kind of maybe curls the lashes as well. But alas, I often get a little blotch of mascara on this area. So the trick is to let it dry completely. You know, we, we are inclined to sort of take a tissue or something and just wipe it off and that doesn't work. It just smears it and makes a worse mess. Let it dry in a little blob and then flick it off with this little spoolie. Now you can buy a spoolie. You can buy a spoolie anywhere, but here's a little trick. Any mascara that you have, once you're finished using it, once it's all dried up and it's all used up, you can wash the brush that's in there and use it as a spoolie. Now, this particular mascara is Wet n Wild Mega Length. And I like it because it has a really skinny little brush. And sometimes I like a skinny little brush, especially for the lower lashes. But when this mascara is all done, all I have to do is wash this brush and let it dry and it can be a spoolie. And in fact, I have one that I've had around for quite a while. And this is from a little trial size mascara. I can't remember the mascara, but the brush is pretty nice. It's nice and clean. It's soft. And so I don't even have to buy a spoolie. Another trick that I recently learned from Susan, the little poet, and you might be familiar with her channel. She's a very popular beauty YouTuber is to apply a little bit of powder on the upper eyelid to prevent eyeliner from transferring up there. And again, because I have hooded eyes, I definitely tend to do that. So what you do is you simply take any powder, and I mean, you could use loose powder as well. This is just a compact from O2O, and I think it's translucent shade, and you just put your finger in there, and then you just pat it along there and that prevents the eyeliner from transferring. Now, I use an eyeliner on the upper waterline. I don't use it above on my lid anymore because it's just too wrinkly and smushy there now. But I find it really works, this little trick with the powder. Another thing you can do is apply a little bit of powder to your eyelashes before applying mascara. I've never tried that. I don't know why I haven't tried it. I think I'll try it tomorrow because it sounds like fun. It's supposed to make your lashes thicker. And if you're out of brow gel, no worries. Just use a little bit of hairspray or even setting spray. You could spray it again on a spoolie and just brush that through your brows and it will help them stay in place the way brow gel would. Brilliant. 
Another thing is that if you're out of eyeshadow primer, you can use concealer. And that's what I've been doing. I do have a little bit of eyeshadow primer, but I don't use concealer the way it's supposed to be used. And yet I have a few products of concealer. So I've been using it as eyeshadow primer and it works really well. One thing I do when I have applied my eyeshadow primer is I put a very thin layer of powder and I use either powder, pressed powder or loose powder. And I just swish all over the eyelid and I find that that sets the eyeshadow primer or the concealer. Another trick I heard about is that you can put a few drops of saline and maybe even water into your flaky or kind of old or dried up mascara. If you haven't used a certain mascara in a while and it's not really too, too old and you want to let the formula be a little thinner and wetter, just apply a few drops of saline. I've never tried it, but I heard about that one. That sounds really cool and it allows you to use all your product up, which I'm a big fan of. Now, castor oil is just a marvelous product and it's known for helping hair grow. And that applies to the hair on your head, but also your eyebrows and your eyelashes. So I don't have any castor oil right now. In fact, I ordered some and the one that I ordered comes with its own little tools, its own little brush and spoolie, which would make it really easy to apply to those brows and eyelashes. And if you do that every night, people do see a result and they do see the hair growing thicker and longer. So there's another tip for you. Let's talk about lips now. Apparently the trend these days is to match your blush to your lip color, which kind of makes sense because you don't want a warm color on your face and then a cool color on your lips. That would kind of clash, I suppose. So I guess the best way to ensure that would be to use the same product on your cheeks as you do on your lips. And one thing that I did learn from Mrs. Melissa M quite a while ago, and I just love this, is to use simply a little white piece of paper to blot your lipstick instead of using a tissue because tissue sometimes will leave little flecks on your lips, whereas the white paper doesn't. I just love this hack and I use it all the time. And I'm a big fan of a lip brush. I started using a lip brush, I suppose when I was in my 30s. This one I bought a while back from Amazon. I love this one. Now it has two brushes. And by the way, any products or some of the products that I'm talking about today, I have listed in the description box with the link where you can buy them if you want to uh, do that. So this particular one has two ends and it has two brushes, different sizes. So the thinner one, you would simply apply your lipstick and line your lips with that. And then this one, you would also take some lipstick out of the tube and fill it in. So you're basically painting your lips and you have perfect control with a lip brush. I find that lipstick applied with a lip brush and blotted with that white paper, it really tends to last. So I really enjoy this little hack. One thing I forgot to mention when we were talking about eyes is that I have discovered these little mini sponges. Oh my gosh, they are the cutest. They come in a package. Uh, I think there's 10 or 12 in the package. And when you are applying your primer and or your eyeshadow, you can use this to um, press in the color, press in the primer. It's just the cutest, daintiest little thing and this comes in all different colors. So I put the link for this down below for you. Another thing that I like to have a few of is a big, soft, smushy powder puff. I like to use this after I have applied my foundation. It's the last step. I just simply go all over and I'm pressing in the foundation as well as picking up any excess that is left on my skin because I want that foundation to be in my skin. I don't want it to be sitting on top of my skin. I want a nice natural finish and I just find that using a powder puff does that for me. And of course, we have to wash our sponges and our powder puffs. What I do, just because I am lazy, is that I use one of these little laundry bags and I simply wash them in my regular laundry. 
So I will put this in with my whites, with my light colors. I always wash in cold water anyway. And I put this whole thing in the dryer as well. You know, these sponges, they do stain after a while. But if they've been through the washer, at least I know they're clean. So I can certainly use them several times and it just makes it easy peasy to wash these and the, and the powder puffs as well. Did you know that vigorously towel drying your hair is so damaging to your wet hair? Well, I didn't know this until a couple of months ago. Imagine, for 76 years, I've been drying my hair, probably like a lot of you, with a towel and just very vigorously. Well, apparently that is really damaging to wet hair because wet hair is pretty fragile and it can um, damage the strands, it can cause frizz, it can cause breakage. So what to do is to simply wrap your head in a soft towel or sometimes a t-shirt they say and let it sort of soak up the water and then I just sort of blot the water from my hair. Now I always let my hair dry naturally because I'm never in a great big hurry to go anywhere and I always plan to leave enough time to dry my hair naturally. But who knew that that was so hard on the hair? So I've been much gentler with my hair lately since I learned this hack. And speaking of hair, I wash my hair about twice a week and the night before I'm going to wash my hair I put some oil in it and quite a bit of oil and I massage it into my scalp. Now the oil I'm using right now is Desert Essence 100% jojoba oil but I think you could use any kind of oil and of course you could use castor oil for that. I just want to give my hair a little bit of extra moisture and give my scalp a little bit of extra moisturization as well while I sleep and then the next morning of course because my hair looks all greasy I'm going to wash it anyway. So that's just what I've been doing and I will use this all up before I go to my castor oil which probably will be delivered today. And finally sometimes I remove my makeup with coconut oil. You know, we can use makeup remover, we can use uh, micellar water, we can use uh, makeup remover balm or oils or cold cream, but really just as effective and very inexpensive is coconut oil. And I have a big jar of it, so every now and then I will use it to remove my makeup as the first step in my double cleanse. Now, the only thing is, of course, it's very oily, so I usually use it on the night before I'm going to be washing my hair because I don't want to get that oil in my hair. So there you have it. Those are some of my favorite affordable, effective, efficient beauty hacks. And I'm sure I've forgotten some and I would love to know what yours are. So don't be shy. Put them in the comments below. Thank you for joining me. I love you all so much and I thank you for supporting my channel. Come back and see me in my next video. Bye bye for now.